Nvidia gamers can now get a massive quality boost or space savings with their Shadowplay recordings in the latest Nvidia app update. In case you missed it, Nvidia is finally combining the ancient control panel and GeForce experience into a new modern app. The initial release of this gave us 120 FPS recording and now we get to use the new high efficiency and open source AV1 codec on RTX 40 series cards as well. Yes, I know AMD had this first in Relive, but better late than never. If you have an RTX 40 series card, install the latest NVIDIA app update and in your recording settings, you'll see a video codec selector below the frame rate selector and there you can choose AV1. Make sure you also update the drivers to the June drivers. These should be 555.99 along with this or you'll get some bad results. I'll show this in a bit. If you're on 30 series or older cards, you won't see this option. Unfortunately, this means NVIDIA is not following the path that YouTube and AMD started of seemingly giving up the battle against HEVC, a codec supported by most GPUs going back 10 years or so, so older NVIDIA cards aren't getting a huge update here. But there is still an update for you. First, I want to clarify, HEVC is still used for HDR by Shadowplay recording on any modern GPU and for 8K recording on RTX 30 series. So it is still used there, but not for standard recordings. But go below this and the bitrate slider for both AV1 and H.264 now reaches up to 250 megabits per second. That's a 100 megabit per second increase over the previous cap and a wonderful boost for any NVIDIA user if you can handle the file size. Let's take a look at the juicy new AV1 option. AV1 is a free codec that is way more efficient than standard H.264, allowing you to either get way more quality at the same file size or save on file size while maintaining the same quality. NVIDIA RTX 40 series, AMD RX 7000 series, and Intel Arc all support encoding with AV1 on the GPU, making it accessible compared to trying to encode it traditionally on your processor. I have a whole playlist of AV1 coverage to learn more from if you're interested. While I always recommend recording in the best quality you can since your videos will be compressed after editing and then compressed again by YouTube or other video sites that you upload to, if you record long sessions or build up lots of clips, those files definitely start to add up. So I wanted to play around and see what you could get away with when it comes to lowering your target bitrate in AV1 with Shadowplay without losing quality. Different types of content do require different bit rates to look good too. A slow, static Hearthstone match can get away with a lot less bitrate than a fast-paced first-person shooter match or a screen-filling Vampire Survivors run, for example. But it's worth noting that not everyone should use AV1, depending on your workflow. Stay tuned, I'll talk about who should and shouldn't enable this after we look at quality. While obviously turning on AV1 and cranking the bitrate to 250 megs looks incredible, you don't necessarily need to spend the file space for this. I recorded a bunch of demos of the same theater clip from Halo at 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, and 250 megabits per second, both in AV1 and H.264, so I could compare and determine the point of diminishing returns. Even though MCC is not the most encoder challenging game to show, I needed something with a theater mode that I could replicate the same clip over and over. I recorded these samples at 4K 120fps to both tax the encoder as much as I could and so we could easily slow down the clips and see compression artifacting. At 10 megabits per second, AV1 is already impressing me. H.264 tends to be a blocky mess tends to be a blocky mess, with small pixel blocks being visible across the entire screen, whereas AV1 has a better time with similar colors, looking relatively artifact-free, only showing major artifacting at high contrast areas. Quality continues to improve up through 20 megabits per second where the obvious pixelization across the screen starts to be less apparent from H.264, but then when you compare to AV1, oh, with AV1 you can actually see the textures of the floors. <laughs> wow. While the image gets cleaner as you go up, you don't start to recover floor textures with H.264 until around 30 megabits per second, and even then they're still muddier than AV1 was at like 15 megabits per second. I don't think we get a clean enough feed with H.264 that competes with most of AV1's encodes until we jump to like 100 megabits per second. I'd say Nvidia's claim of a 40% reduction in bitrate required for AV1 versus H.264 is accurate. H.264 at 30 megabits per second looks about as good as 15 or 20 megabits per second in AV1. That is crazy. You can save so much extra space with AV1 hoarding all sorts of games clips and let's plays or record an absolutely pristine quality with this update. I'd say if you don't want the best possible quality, the diminishing returns is around 30 to 50 megabits per second with AV1, which is a lot less than the 100 to 150 megabit per second range I typically recommended for H.264. 
I do want to note that you absolutely need to update drivers for this. In my original testing, I updated the NVIDIA app, but remained on older drivers, and the quality turned out horrible. AV1 looked worse than H.264 somehow. This is quite odd. I don't know why the driver had to be updated to fix this since AV1 worked fine in OBS, but thankfully the June update seems to be working better. But there are still some bugs. First, there's some missing header information in the recording's metadata. This causes the end of files to glitch out and show up offline in video editors like Resolve, and worse yet, it makes them not be processed at all if you upload the clips directly to YouTube. I was originally using Halo Infinite's theater mode for this demo, so you see those clips, but it turns out the driver version that works with AV1, 555.99, has a crashing issue with Halo Infinite, and I can't even launch it until they update the drivers. Secondly, there's a gamma shift in the AV1 recordings. It, appear, it appears the files misreport their RGB range as full when they should be set to limited. Manually forcing them to limited, or video as Resolve calls it, more or less fixes this. Colors still aren't perfectly matched between the two, however. This is similar to the issue that plagued the initial units of the Eon XBHD video adapters, which has since been fixed there too. Video on that update soon. NVIDIA is aware of all these updates and working to fix them. In fact, the header error causing broken YouTube uploads is already fixed for the next NVIDIA app coming out soon. I mentioned before that not everyone should record with AV1. So who shouldn't? Well, it depends on what you're doing with your clips. If you're editing videos in DaVinci Resolve or just uploading clips directly to YouTube after that upcoming update to fix that comes out, you're good since you'll, you'll be able to work with them just fine. Since you have to have modern GPUs with AV1 encoding and decoding to even use this update in the first place, they should play back smoothly too. But if you just want to upload quick clips to just about any other website or platform, you'll run into issues as AV1 support has not rolled out to most other sites yet. Also, if you edit in programs other than Resolve, such as Adobe Premiere Pro, you won't have much luck either. Despite being mentioned in NVIDIA's original AV1 announcements a while back, the 2024 version of Premiere still does not support AV1 playback. If you import the files, it just shows up as audio only. As a side note, QuickTime on Mac only plays audio from them too. I've had a couple of people in my Discord mention recording to AV1 and then transcoding those clips to another format to edit, but my advice, don't waste your time. There is nothing to be gained there and a lot of time, file space, and likely quality loss to be cost here to do this unless you do it just right. Just record H.264 until your workflow supports it. Bugs aside, this is an exciting release, and I'm super stoked to be able to finally squish my gameplay clips down with AV1 moving forward as I record a ton. Check out the app beta and sound off in the comments with what your experience has been. Uh, check out this video to see OBS's latest beta for the other side of this capture coin, and remember to be kind, rewind.